Today we'll be looking at multiple choice questions relating to reconciliation and verification. In other words, focusing on reconciling our control accounts with our sales ledger and purchases ledger, as well as looking at our bank reconciliation. In order to do this, I've chosen to use uh, the Cambridge June 2016 paper 1-1, questions 4, 5, 6 and 7. So let's have a look at question 4. The total of trade payables in Conrad's purchases ledger was 57,400. The following errors were then discovered. So we obviously need to use this as our starting point that the purchases ledger has got 57,400 in the account. Well, as a total of all the different ledger accounts. Because remember, that's all the different suppliers added together. We are then going to use all those errors, but before we do that, let's quickly check what is asked. We are looking for the correct total of the trade payables balance. In other words, this amount here is wrong, and we want the correct total of the purchases ledger. So it's the same thing that we're looking for, but we just need to take into account all the errors. Now, when you're looking at this, don't just assume that every single one will be used, because as you will see in this question, some are given to you as what I would call a red herring. In other words, something that is put there not to intentionally trick you, although you might think so, but simply to see, do you understand what you need to filter out? Are you able to identify the important information and not use the unimportant information? So the first one that is given here is a discount allowed. Now, remember that a discount allowed relates to customers. So therefore, it doesn't relate to our purchases or our suppliers at all. And so therefore, that is going to have a null effect. The fact that it was overcast by 2,000 Rand, yes, that will affect my sales ledger, but it is not going to affect this. So that would only be the sales ledger. Now, you don't need to write this line in at all. I'm simply showing it so that you can better understand why we don't use it. The next one, returns outwards omitted in a supplier's account. Well, that is a problem because remember that a particular supplier's account would have been included in the purchaser's ledger. And so if we forgot to put it in completely, that means that my purchaser's ledger total will be wrong. So returns outwards that were omitted and returns outwards is to suppliers. Um, so we are going to have to take into account the fact that, oh sorry my spelling is atrocious, that if my returns outwards have been left out completely, what that means is that I actually owe my suppliers less money than what I thought. And so therefore I am going to have to subtract that 350 in order to get the answer that I am looking for. The next one says payments to trade payables were undercast in the cash book. Remember that cash book total is not going to affect my purchases ledger because the individual accounts would have been posted, not the total. So therefore, this is also going to be a zero effect. The last one, the purchases journal was overcast. Yes, purchases does relate to my suppliers, but yet again, the total is not going to have been posted to the individual accounts in the purchases ledger. So my purchases total, also um, individual accounts, would have been correct. It's exactly the same reason. So there's a zero balance. So that means that at the end of the day, the total that I'm actually going to need to have in my books is 57050. And if you go and look at the answers, you can see here that D must be the one that I'm looking for. Out of interest, if you had used that 2000 or for that matter, the 137 or the 500 that you needed to leave out, you would probably find that your answer doesn't actually appear here, which means that you would realize you're wrong and you need to go back and have a look for what you have done incorrectly. Be careful, however. The fact that your answer is here does not necessarily mean that it is right. Very often when they're setting the question, they might want to see, would you have included the 2000, for example, and then shown this as a 59050 
for example, as A, B, or C. So although you can't assume that you are right if your answer appears, if your answer does not appear, you certainly can assume that you are wrong. So that's how you would do question four. Let's go on and have a look at question five. Question five says the debit balance on a company's sales ledger control account was 125,000 Rand. The following errors were then discovered. In the same way, we need to start with the figure that has been given. Now, like we were looking at the purchases ledger, we are now looking at sales ledger. However, notice that we are actually not looking at the total of the individual accounts, but we are now looking at the total of the control account. Remember that this control account is created as a summary of all the individual sales accounts or um, individual customer accounts in the sales ledger as a check to see if we've made any mistakes. And when we create this control account, we are actually using all the totals posted. So for example, if we go back and look at number four, if here we weren't looking at the purchases ledger total, but we're looking at the control account total, these two amounts would have needed to be taken into account. So just remember the difference between your individual accounts versus your control account. So over here, we are looking at the sales control account and I'm actually going to highlight the word control here so that you can remember we're looking at the total or the summary. We can show that we're starting with 125,000 and then we can look at all the errors but before we even do that let's go and check what we needed. We need the total of the balances in the sales ledger. So the sales ledger total is what we are actually looking for. Now you might think that that's odd because how do we get from the control to the sales ledger? Quite simply, remember that the total in the sales ledger, if you add all the individual accounts together, should equal the balance in the control account. Which means that if we take all the errors into account, we would get the correct control account, which should actually equal um, this control, uh, the sales ledger total. So that's why I can actually have them both over there. It would be the same thing. So let's go and have a look here. Number one, a bad debt of $800 had not been entered in the sales ledger control account. Now, your bad debt reduces the receivables because you don't expect the payment. You've written off the account. And so therefore, we should have taken that 800 rand into account when we're working out our control account. So we do need to show that amount. The next one, number two, is an increase in the provision for doubtful debts of $500 was required. So you need to create the provision or adjust the provision. Okay, um, It doesn't actually mention, given the fact that they haven't given you a previous provision, you would assume that you're going to create the provision. However, I want you to think about this. The provision, when you create or adjust it, you are going to use a provision account and a provision adjustment account. You are not going to use your control account nor the individual accounts. The individual customers are not affected. You certainly um, are not going to say to a person, oh well, you know, I don't expect you to pay so I'll just provide for that. You certainly don't want them to know that. Um, so over here, you will not have any effect for creating a provision. It will not affect your control account nor your sales ledger. The last one, the sales journal had been overcast by a thousand rand. If your sales journal has been overcast, that means that your control account would have too little in it. So we do need to take this into account. If we were looking at the individual accounts, they would have been posted correctly, but this will affect the control account um, because too much would have been posted to the control. And so therefore you need to subtract 1,000 Rand from the control account to make it equal the amount in the ledger that would have been correct because the individuals would have been posted there. So when you add all of that up, you should get 123,200. And if you have a look, can you see the answer here? Oh yes, thank goodness, we are going to choose answer B. Let's now go and have a look at question six. Question six says, a business's suspense account appears as follows. Which statements are correct? 
Now, before you go and look at the statements themselves, I would suggest that you look at this control account on its own to see what has actually happened here and then look at the statements. Otherwise, what you might find is that the statements confuse you slightly or mislead you into thinking that something up here is different to what it actually is. So let's just take them one by one. The discount allowed on the debit side of 150, remember this is my suspense account, so if I've debited my suspense account, that means my discount allowed would have been credited when you were fixing the error. In other words, to fix the error, you were um, reducing the expense to fix the error. The opening balance of $100 on the credit side means that the, the credits were smaller than the debits because otherwise you would have put it on the other side. Remember that this balance here is a missing figure. So if it's a credit side balance, it means that's what it was missing. So the credits must have been smaller by $100. The last point we look at sales is 50 on the credit side, which means sales was actually debited, um, in other words, by the 50. Um, in other words, you were reducing the income to correct the error. So now let's go and have a look at the suggestions that they've given us. Number one says the total debits had been $100 less than the total credits in the trial balance. Now, if you have a look, we've already figured out that the credits were smaller than the debits, not the other way around. So the answer is no, because it, it does not work with this that we figured out. Number two, the sales account had been overcast by $50. Overcast means that it was too much. So to fix it, you would have had to um, decrease it or reduce it, which does agree with what we are talking about over here. We said that the sales was debited, in other words, reducing the income to correct the error. So therefore, the answer for number two is yes. Number three, the discount allowed had been overcast by 150. It's exactly the same as the above. Overcast means that you would have, um, have to decrease to fix it. In other words, yes, because we've already worked out that you are reducing that expense. So that means your answers are two and three. And if you go and have a look over here, that would give you C as the option that you would want to choose. The last question is question seven, which is a bank reconciliation. It tells us that the bank statement shows a credit balance of $1,500. So we can put in here... Our bank statement is always a good place to start. And I actually quite like doing a bank reconciliation in this order. Sorry, 1,500, not 15. Um, because I, you start with a bank statement and then you say, what would the bank have to do to agree with us? Because we want to know at the end what is the cash book balance. And so that's what we are looking for. And hopefully you realize that should equal the bank statement balance if it is correct. Um, once you've taken everything into account. Okay. Um, right, just quickly coming back to this 1500 Rand here. It says that it shows a credit balance of 1500. Remember that the bank always shows everything from an opposite viewpoint to what you have. So, in other words, if they are showing a credit, it means you would have a debit in your books. In other words, it means that the bank owes the money to you. So it is favorable, um, and that is why I have left it as a positive over here. It then says we've got an outstanding payment of 500 and a receipt of 1250. We did include them in our cash book, but the bank statement does not yet see it. They've not yet appeared on the bank statement, so the bank does not yet know about it. So we want to say, well, if the bank figures this out or when they find it out, we are going to take those into account. When the bank finds out about the outstanding payment, um, they would want to obviously reduce our account by 500. And when they find out about the outstanding receipt, they would need to increase our account by 1250. The last thing over here is 
the bank interest payable of 1,100 had been correctly recorded in the cash book. So we are correct in our records, but due to a bank error, it had been recorded in the bank statement as $1,000. That means that we need to correct what the bank thinks there should be. So a correction of bank error um, is going to change the amount that the bank statement should be later on. We're going to want to look out for all of these things here on the next bank statement to check that they have done it. Um, and what will have to happen there is you can see that it should have been more than what they recorded. So we need to reduce our account by 100 Rand, or I should say the bank needs to reduce our account by 100 Rand to take that into account because they have forgotten about 100 Rand's worth of interest that we need to pay them. And then you should realize that you will get an answer that should be the same as what you've got in your books because this is once the bank has taken all of these things into account, it should agree with your cash balance, which is why we can assume that therefore that is a correct cash book balance. I do hope that working through these questions has aided you to better understand this section. If you have any questions or problems, please do feel free to contact me and ask for help. Thank you.